All right, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you have not seen these videos before, welcome and welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and highest levels of love light. I am just gonna go into a little flow. Oftentimes I think I'm gonna start off by doing an energy update or share some personal experiences. And then I go into the space of there's so much that I wanna share and go into that it helps me to just go into a little bit of just pure toning, light language and connection to source. And then I can transition easier into a little bit more of a balanced conversation from my perspective. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna start off with a little flow. Some people call it channeling. Some people call it connecting to the guides and higher self. It's my team. So I'm gonna connect with my team and just share whatever is most needed in this now moment from my perspective for the collective experience. Sometimes this is just meant to be felt and not necessarily understood on a linear basis. Uh, I'll probably give a little energy update at the end if I still have time. And a little bit about my own personal um, experiences this week, if anybody's interested. So I'm just, as I do this, I go right into my heart space. And as I anchor into my heart space, I focus on extending that energy out through the rest of my body and fully embodying that heart-centered awareness that we all have access to. And in doing this, I intend to clear my channel and connect and attune to the earth, which I'm being guided to share for those of you who are not in a place where you can put your feet on the ground when you're trying to ground, when you're trying to connect into the earth, you're in a high rise, you're in a city, your body is part of the earth. You have all the chemical components that are made up of the earth. You are water, you are bone, you are um, crystalline composition that is fully and completely with mother earth as part of mother earth. So if you have a day or two or three or even a week where you're unable to do that, put your feet in a plant. I talk about this all the time in a potted soil, get in a bathtub with some Epsom salts, put your crystals in the tub, put them outside in the sun to charge, put them in the tub and make that um, intention to fully connect into your earth body because they're not separate. Otherwise we would be living in the astral or another planet like Venus. Uh, wouldn't that be fun? Well, some of us are <laughs> in our other multidimensional aspects right now. And then as I do that, I ask fully to connect with source energy creator of my soul. That's just what I label it as. That's how I do it. Everybody's got their own way of doing it. Just breathing in and out. I'm just setting the tone and spinning some frequencies around. I'm gonna pause this just for a moment. But my sound is okay. I tried some different things and I haven't tested them out yet, but we'll see. So as we speak in these sounds and these tones, and as we sing, as we allow our own electrical signal and impulses to merge through our choice of words, our choice of sound, our sound harmonics, the components of energy that we are connecting into. It allows us to shift the frequency. It allows us to expand our frequency. It allows us to expand out, to greet, meet, connect into, and sync up with the higher versions of the auditory components that activate within us the chemicals and signals that allow us to trans, mm, so many words, harmonize, transmute, harmonize, hone in with, and chemically balance our own composition. For when we sing in this way, through our intention, through our own inner song, sound, harmonic, 
we intertwine with, mm -hmm. we intertune with, we interconnect with the tones and the frequencies that allow us to communicate with a higher harmony of elemental design. We then allow ourselves to listen in to the universe. We allow ourselves to listen in transition as we make our own transitory. I'm hearing commitments, movements, and move into new docking stations. It allows us to be more informed during and through these transitions. It allows us to fade out the resonances that no longer resonate with our harmonic scale. It allows us to make the adjustments that are required in order to fully activate our linguistical, analytical, and new places of reference or reference points. It allows us to map into our own singularity, our own singular node and knowingness that then allows us to block out, so to speak, or phase out or fade out the noises, the background noise, and it moves us into a higher definition. Yet there is no definitive uh, barricade, so to speak, that holds us into a definitive vocabulary. For we have access to the vocabulary of all vocabularies. We are beyond a linguistical or language diagnostic run. Guys, I'm just saying what comes through. A lot of this is the plan words. I'll probably have to go back and type this up if I want to and share the wordplay. If you guys haven't seen these videos before, what I was told over and over again by my higher guidance team is the way that I speak has a mathematical code to it. Not always, but in this particular um, sharing today, I can, I can see and feel that it does. Because as I say this, I'm literally seeing geometry. <laughs> Uh, which my geometry teacher um, teachers would really get a kick out of that right now. Fast forward. <laughs> For all linguistics holds a mathematical pattern that is hidden within the sound components, so to speak. It is embedded in the architecture of our reality. And part of our reality is communication. And our communication is accessed by an underscore. I'm being guided to go back and re say that in a different way. Our communication is changed through the underscore. So I'm being guided. That's a big play on words. So just, I'm just going to roll with it. So in other words, we are adjusting the spin that many of us are in, for we were in a spin of lesser density from one perspective or higher viscosity from another perspective or a fuller or more dense materialistic um, architecture from another perspective. And within those reality systems, we had a mold in which we created it, yet it is moldy. It has overgrown with mold. And as we move out of this parasitic environment, we let go of the need to attach ourselves to those particular, I keep hearing diagnostics, diagnostic run. We allow ourselves to full on face head on and not run from these parasitic environments, yet we out create it. But I'm being guided to play with this. We create a new language. We create a new linguistical vocabulary with, within which to communicate that is inaccessible, inaccessible to the lower geometries, to the lower, um, ooh. <laughs> I'm hearing all kinds of words. We open up to the expansiveness of our vocabulary. I'm being guided to stop, drop. <laughs> I'm just wanting to just talk about vocabulary for a moment because 
from my perspective, vocabulary itself is a play on words. Vocal, it's a vehicle in order to vocalize um, harmonics and feelings and thoughts. So the cab carries the vocals, right? But I'm also being guided to share that I could play with that, turn it into vocabulary. It's a Rubik's cube. It holds different information. If you put picture a cube and you turn it one way and you turn it another way and you turn it another way and then you turn the cubes within the cubes, the letters match up and create different things like Scrabble. But those different letters are information bandwidths. And those different letters hold within them a certain sound component when vocalized. So that um, that then is activating, it carries with it information, memory, harmony, mathematical, linguistical, computational connections to source, to our guides, to the earth, to all of the planets, to the fabric of reality and the fabric of our imaginative and creative ability to express in a myriad of ways, not limiting ourselves to a particular vocabulary or presentation of that form or style of communication. And I'm being shown text. So uh, there's another name for it. Um, when you choose your font. So it's a signature frequency when you calibrate to, let's say, a particular font. But then when you put in the symbols and you change everything else, if you just communicate through symbols, it's computer programming linguistics. If you change it to, so you kind of get where I'm going with that. If you use a Comic Sans font, it gives it a casual feeling. If you use Roman numerals or let's say a different font, it makes it seem more sturdy and older, right? So it shifts, it changes the vibration around the way we read the message. And that's essentially what this is in a nutshell. So the way that I speak in my speech patterns, uh, what I'm hearing is dice in and splice in all of these different waveforms or different spins that then activate within the human context, and that's plan words, different ways to play with these words. So all of a sudden, a word will sound different when one of us speaks it than when another person speaks it because of the energy that we are projecting from behind it's the words behind the words, the sound behind the sound, it's the letter behind the letter. Uh, so without getting too lost in this um, network of vocabulary. Okay, I'm being guided to just pause for a moment. Okay, so just play with this briefly, vocabulary, all the words of a language, the sum of words used by, understood by, or at the command of a particular person or group. A list of words and often phrases usually arranged alphabetically and defined or translated a lexicon or glossary. Now, if I go into this, it's from the word name, noun, voice. I didn't know that, but that makes sense, vocal, voice. So it says it's vocabulary, a list of words, vocare, to name or to call, Voice, the root word is to speak. So it's so much. And speech isn't, it's not just about the sound. We can have vocabulary through symbols, words, artwork, movement, sign language, right? So there's all var variations of communication. <laughs> Tiar or in the petestor in the air or stroke or an tikir akana. So when we make these hand signals, we are putting a certain spin or direction for the language that we are communicating from within. We then break through certain time boundaries and barriers 
in this timeless form of communication. And as we do this, we change the directional flow and the energy behind where this vocabulary sits within the fabric of time and space or sits within the fabric of the quantum field. Therefore, this is why words can be felt. This is why I'm using the example of like Reiki. This is why energy healing can be felt for we are essentially pinging or pulling on the spider cobweb, the string that is attached to the human, so to speak, that is attached to the reality that is being um, expressed and created in this very now moment. So we all create and have access to this creational void space that is within us that is a continual flow and influx of spin patterns and directional reference points. And many of us have these capabilities, all of us have these capabilities, but many of us have these capabilities that are bubbling up to the surface. We feel the resonance of certain harmonics pulling at our heartstrings, stirring this remembrance within us of a different illogical way of communicating. For this moves beyond logic and it must be combined with feeling. It must be combined with the physical sensations that we have been gifted with, that are our gifts, that allow us to combine the right and the left and all aspects of the human technology, skin suit, divine application, divine amplification. For within each of us sits a creative substance that once activated oozes through, if you will, and opens the channels of light. It pressurizes the entire skin suit, I'm hearing combustion chamber, and allows us to open certain uh, components while under pressure. Plan words. I'm seeing a scuba diver. I'm seeing pressurizing within a tank. And I'm seeing a lot of different meanings associated and attached with this. I'm hearing under pressure. Ooh. Okay. So when I go into that, it takes me into bowing out, David Bowie. It takes me into um, golden means. It takes me into um, being able to stabilize our own abilities and our own ability to communicate with ourselves, ourselves, each other, while we're under pressure and not buckling um, and then getting sucked into someone else's. And I'm being guided to share that this is vocabulary. So if you think of a story, a story is full of words. Word are set, we'll start with chapters. It's full of words and sentences or words that are combined. It's full of letters. It has, each letter has a vibrational spin, but then you add it together and you put it together and it creates a vibrational pattern that then elicits emotions it triggers memories. It triggers us to visualize things. I'm hearing outside of the cerebral cortex, but from that, like a projector. So it's so powerful. And while we're reading someone else's story, we're actually creating our own story from our response because it's eliciting a response from us. So I'm being guided to just share how important that is. Because many of us, I mean, what I'm hearing is there's a lot of people out there that are on repeat. They hear a story. They're so embedded in that other person's story. They then repeat it as their own. They take on the words. They take on the vocabulary. And while that can be valuable at certain times, like when you're studying subject matter, 
that has a relevancy to the expansiveness of humankind, but there's a lot out there that does not expand the human consciousness. It merely expands the mind, but even more dense than that, which we could play with this, meaning heavier than that, would be the, the words and the vocabulary that do not expand the human consciousness. They don't expand the mind, they expand the mind. And I'm being guided to have you guys seen um, Finding Nemo, mine, 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 the seagulls. <laughs> no offense, seagull tribe, but um, mine, it's this me. It's like, oh, okay, I am this. And it's separate. It's creating this separateness. And essentially what it does is it locks us into a cerebral pattern. What I'm hearing right now is that there's a lot of cerebral hemorrhaging going on. And I'm being guided to play with that. Mm, okay. If I just play with hemorrhaging, there's a lot of hem hawing going on. Like, should I do this or should I do that? There's a lot of like, ah, it's too much, right? I can't control it. It's, I don't know what's going on. Then there's a lot of, I have to shut down because I feel like my brain is going to explode. And then there's a lot of, I'm going to believe that because it's easy to do that. It's a habit pattern. Okay. I'm going to play with this just for a moment. Cause that was a weird one. Okay. So I always think of that as bleeding, right? There's a lot of bleeding. Now I'm being guided to play with this a little bit because essentially what I'm seeing is we're leaking energy. Okay. We're losing energy and it's causing, I'm hearing it's cerebral hemorrhage, it's hemorrhaging. It's causing an overload. It's causing us to lose charge and it's causing us to shut down important parts of our brain. So it's not expanding our mind, but it, we have to use our heart in order to expand our consciousness, not just our logical side, because what's happening is people are then just going, turning to logic because they're not able to access this deeper vocabulary, which literally is the communication with source, with the earth, with our bodies. Um, so I will share what I'm going to look up is hemorrhage um, definition, a copious loss of something valuable. Obviously, excessive discharge of blood from the blood vessels, profuse bleeding. When I think of bleeding, I think of losing charge, a copious loss of something valuable, ruptured, the loss of assets, especially in large amounts. Um, if I go a little deeper to this, it says it's any widespread or uncontrolled loss or diffusion. Wow. I kind of see that as happening on a massive scale right now. So let's come back into the flow and then I'll keep going into a little bit more. Um, as above, so below, as within, so without. So in order to help control this copious loss, this overflow, if you will, the holes, um, I keep seeing people leaking and they're like, oh, leak over here, oh, leak over here, oh, I ran out of ways to shut off the leaks. And so they're just like, information overload. We must get back to the basics. When we speak of vocabulary and we speak of communication, we must recognize that we are communicating with a host. Our body is our host, our host for our light components, our information, our DNA, and the way in which we interact with our body is a direct reflection of the way we interact with each other and a direct reflection of the way we interact with our host, which is Mother Earth. We must recognize that we are the host. Therefore, what is it that we are attaching ourselves to about what we are telling ourselves that are causing a direct loss of our value, a direct loss of our energy? What stories, and I'm being guided to remind what I just said a minute ago about how a story has this and has that, and then we project our reality into that story, and we create a we create it in our imagination, which then further creates this energy around the story. So this is a play on words. It's like, what words are we picking up in our field and then bringing into our own vocabulary and repeating? Many of us are repeating words that are daggers, uh, play on words, 
daggers into our auric field, daggers into the heart, and they are creating, I'm just seeing poking holes. They are poking holes at, um, they're not allowing us, I keep seeing a balloon that's being deflated and going all over the place. And I'm seeing what happens is this loss of charge is going somewhere. Where is it going? If it's not going into something that is accessible for the entire collective, and it is only being funneled into these stories or programs that are being transmitted into the field as a distraction point, then what is it serving? It is not serving a collective of a higher consciousness and higher development. It is merely serving an older, I'm hearing um, vocabulary and archeology, span which is old energy, which is old, I'm hearing society. For the new earth and the new world is based on the true substantiated, ways of living that our ancestors taught us. The indigenous peoples had all of the assets. <laughs> I'm seeing crystals. I'm seeing beautiful natural foods. I'm seeing hugging each other. I'm seeing people connecting in circles and meditating together. I'm seeing villages come together and help each other build houses. This communion and community is truly in, the, in this place of fractionization versus fractalization. So I'm seeing fracking, like it's being chipped away at because of this external malware that is trying to get into the mainframe. However, the mainframe is infinite, for we are all infinite source beings of light. Therefore, this mainframe or motherboard, motherboard is truly within the cellular makeup and vocabulary of the heart. We use these words interchangeably and we play with them. For words that are harnessed in harmful ways, are backed up on a programmable unit of disinformation. They are put into a system of loopholes, which then creates a pattern of association that we then tune into and believe is our own location. Meaning we then give the charge to those that are <laughs> I'm seeing um, in charge of this looping extravaganza. <laughs> Who? What are we charging? Whose batteries are we charging? What is it that we are charging forward to? When we are not, uh, I'm hearing when we haven't even read the forward. <laughs> Guys, this is so layered. I'm seeing a book. And it's like, no, this book is real. We skipped, we're not reading the foreword. How often do we read the foreword? I hardly ever read it. But, but I'm being shown that this example is, it says right there in the foreword what the book is going to do to us. If we read it and then we create this looping pattern, oh, that's a, a word that we believe is real because we read it in a book. <laughs> And then it's been put back into this, um, not the main frame, but like this artificial frame work. And then it gets fed back into the system and it gets fed back into the system and it gets fed back into our reality till finally we begin to believe that that is our reality. And what really was going on is in the forward, four words, it told us what it was gonna do, but we skipped it because we just said, Oh, well, this is what we're going to believe in. And got, by the way, guys, this is one layer. This also represents our own habit patterns. It represents what we're um, programming our body to believe. And this does lead me directly into, and there's a lot of other layers here because there's mathematical layers here. There's geometries that we're creating in our reality. There's um, multiple timelines that we're accessing right now through our language 
through our communication. So many people want, okay, so I just went into five different places. It's that kind of energy today. Many people want to connect with their higher self. They want to connect with their guides, yet it's not logical to them. And because they're so wrapped up in a habit pattern or certain limiting beliefs, and many of these beliefs stem around words such as not real, such as that doesn't exist, such as that's your imagination, such as you'll be crazy, you're crazy, such as um, uh, so many things I could go into. Loop, loop, loop. So immediately we start to connect with that energy or it's connecting with us because it's a living, all these guides, our higher selves, all beings that we connect with are um, threads holding frequencies. They're light exchange sounds and vibration, right? And it's communicating with us always. Yet, some people are stuck in a mapping system. They don't realize it. So every once in a while, those strands get through and they're like, hey, guess what? Go into your heart right now. And the program kicks in and we go, oh, that's for sissies. I mean, that's an old term, but that's an old program. Think about how many people that are maybe in their 70s or 80s right now that have been told it's not manly to tap into your emotions. So all of a sudden they get this charge of emotional heart opening and they're like, shut down, does not compute, that's not logical. Um, I'm feeling this in my body something's wrong, go to the doctor. You might want to get that checked out. I mean, not to say don't do that, but I, you get where I'm going with that one layer. The other layer, layer that I'm feeling is also having to do with what we believe. So we're seeing and we're sensing certain things, but we may not believe them because the words and vocabulary that we have valued doesn't match up with what it is that we're opening and expanding to. And that's one of the biggest things right now is limiting self-belief, which is also attached to fear. They can be two separate things. We just may not believe because of our logical analytical side is taken over and looped us into that particular habitual pattern and thinking and disconnected us from our true heart source. But it can also be because of fear, we're afraid because it's not something that we understand logically. Therefore, it does not compute and it's easier to stay in this looping pattern over here or to listen to what somebody else has been telling us because that is what is comfortable for us. It is not comfortable for people to step outside of their comfort zone. So what I'm being shown is this zone loops, loops, loops. And when somebody introduces this new pattern, we don't recognize it. Therefore, it doesn't exist for us. And I'm being guided to share, there's a lot of people probably watching this that might share a piece of information that is 100% truthful or beautiful. And that other person, this does not compute, doesn't even hear us chooses not to because it doesn't, their system doesn't recognize it, or it's an immediate trigger of fear. That's weird. I'm going to ignore that. Pretend like you never even said it. <laughs> I'm sure none of us have experienced that. And so many of us have been deflecting the truth. Many of us have been deflecting our own higher knowing. So we started this video, this form of communication, this energy exchange through letters and vocabulary and certain statements that were meant to be dropped into our field together so that we could ping off of these words and um, this way of mapping, mapping a new system. For the way we communicate with source energy from one perspective or labelized term, plan words, is through 
um, a grid pattern. Okay, so I'm being shown that in a grid, okay, I could go into so many places with this, picture a geometry, picture a cube. And I'm using cube as an example. I see it more, um, it's tor a toroidal field and that, that has shapes within it, within a shape, within a shape. But think of our brain, that might be easier. The synapses that fire and we, we create this trench because we do, we get up, we have coffee, we watch the news, we check our emails, we go to work, we come home, we take care of the kids or I forgot dropping them off to school, but whatever. That's the pattern. That's the pattern. So as those are the patterns that we do, but think about watching the news, for example, or reading a book or reading a newspaper. The words that we are hearing every single day begin to create a pattern that then sits within our field and becomes a manifested entity, belief habit looping network that then hooks us into that style of font. We then communicate or communicate with our environment in that style of font on a more regular or habitual basis. That habitual basis then creates a pattern that looks like a geometry in our bodies, our brain, our chemicals, and our reality, which you can picture a grid around us because it's just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Picture um, string theory, quantum field that we're interacting with. We are then telling through communication and vocabulary and using those words that we've attached value to. We're then telling our field, this is what we want, this is what we believe, this is what we're afraid of, and it becomes our reality. This is all from one perspective. It's much more quantum than this. As we tell that, it communicates with us and gives us more of that. However, there is mo our moments when more comes in because that's a subset that's within a bubble. So this is our reality we're communicating with, and those are our boundaries. But there's more. But because many of us have been ingrained in those patterns, there is no more. We don't know that there's more. We don't think that there's more. We don't believe that there's more. And whenever we get hints that there is more, we shut it down we ignore it. We become afraid of it because it doesn't register, it doesn't compute, and it isn't something that we are in the habit of connecting to. So we don't um, pursue it. We don't look at it. We don't allow it, right? And this is just one version of what's happening in part of our collective experience. You might know of someone that's going through this. You might have gone through this. It might be something you're going through right now. It might be something you've never gone through. So we share with you these forms of vocabulary to essentially help you tune into a higher expression of communication. For many have been so mapped into the system that they don't recognize the communication and the, and the um, I'm hearing chords on the piano that are actually playing at a higher resonance right now. They are here now, all around us. And all it takes is one verb, one, I'm hearing verb now. So like a noun to, to move us into action. This is all playing words. All it takes is one form of communication that breaks through the density and activates the spin to spin at a higher a capacity of resonance, breaking through the incapacitation, the incapacity, the incapability that many have been stuck in. And I'm hearing 
instead of that song stuck on you, stuck on you, I'm hearing stuck like glue, got this feeling down deep in my soul and I just can't fight it. <laughs> oh, it's one of those days. So tuning into these harmonics is as easy as one, two, three. For vocabulary also comes in the form of numbers. For all is a mathematical expression and equation of quantification of the quantifying, <laughs> I'm hearing exuberance of our environment, and this is all a play of words. For as we, um, I've, I've written this before, so I'm just going to keep playing with this. As we pontificate and step into the quantifications, portmanteau of pontificate and quantum and quantifying, we increase our value. We increase our spin, which is invaluable. It is the infinite value system of intricacy and intermetric expression. We are, I'm hearing the meteor shower. Hmm. We then hone in on, hone into the home based frequency that has been attempting to tune us up, turn us up, turn up the heat of our inner fire. For as we turn up our own inner fire and increase our rate of spin, we change the definition of time. We redefine the activities that we are creating and actively creating and interchanging, interexchanging with in our realities. We then open exponentially. We open to a higher plane of existence and we open up and intermingle with our new play. I'm hearing play pals, pen pals, our own playing field. And we then have more to play with. The limiting beliefs that are embedded within our bodies are falling apart. We are all a part of something more magnificent and infinite than many of us have the capability when we are locked into our belief um, bubble of understanding, of expanding into, of accepting. For many of us refuse to accept uh, beyond the linear, Many of us refuse to accept the, own, the gifts that our own future selves and versions of our own future aspects are gifting us right now. For we are accessing these. We are creating them now as our future selves. Coming back to us, our ancestors coming up through us through our DNA, I'm hearing through our cartilage. And as I say that, I'm hearing, oh, to play with that. The uh, new age through our, uh, our vehicle, but I'm also seeing that it's also representative of the indigenous peoples because they were aware of our future versions and they were in connection with them always. And through this beautiful relationship, they established building principles that were important for the future advancement of us now. I'm having deja vu. Uh, it's tying in with many messages that I've um, expressed and I'm just seeing it, it's beautiful. For we are, our ancestors, we are the indigenous for they are within us and we are communicating with them now in such a strong way 
that it can feel emotionally overwhelming at times. We are so much. Can we recognize, recognize? Can we reckon with? Can we reconcile, plan words, our differences long enough to establish coherence, to coherently establish an intelligent conversation with ourselves, with ourselves, with all that it is that we are connected into? For we are relying on a concept or belief about what intelligence really is. For intelligence is merely information. We are limiting our intelligence by limiting our belief about how we receive and communicate with information, which is our forms that we hold within us, our formation at the ions, right? For information is flowing all around us. We must stabilize our own frequency patterns in order to network with this information, in order to mm, interpret and play with the incoming waves, commingling electrons from one perspective, for we are the electronics. Plan words. Everything's plan words in this. I'm just seeing us like lighting up. People are overloading. Some people are shutting down. The more we can come into a space of compassion and have an intelligent conversation, it, it then allows us to harmonize and then boom, well, all of a sudden we hear the sounds that was behind the sound that was blocked by all the noise and I'm um, hearing voiceless vocabulary. Like the noise is being reiterated by artificial sounds. It's not even organic. And we're taking these on as, as real when it's not. So moving from the um, information era to recognize that the information that we have been informed of is not truly expansive, as expansive as we are, for we have outgrown the old system. We are trying to put our shoes on and they are too small to walk in, for we are now walking in the footsteps of our future selves. We are now walking in the footsteps of our ancestors and we are now walking in this ever-present now moment that is bigger than both for it is the combination of coming together that is the true power, that is the true expansiveness that we have been talked out of. It is time to begin talking in an intelligent and intellectual, expansive, compassionate frequency for intellectuality is not the only reality that compels us into expandability and profitability. For the profitability that the old energies seek to exploit are not valuable enough, for we have outsurpassed the value of the old system, for we are the walking metric system. We are the timekeepers. We are the code breakers. We have excelled and accelerated beyond the landscape and predictability of the old mechanics and machinery that is in the process of being shut down. Can we feel it? Can we feel the beautiful expression of our brothers and sisters? Can we feel that we are accessing a higher field ability? For if we cannot feel this, we have created a separation and a division within our own quantification, meaning 
our own ability to quantify our experience, our own ability to step into the quantum, to feel into the quantum field, to feel into our own vibration and communication. We are blocking ourselves from the truth of our divine inner expression. Heart, mind, space, time, all of this is now folding in on itself and flowering out from there, we have beaten the clock. Plan where it's like we've beaten it. It doesn't work anymore, but we've also outrun it. Time is up. We've moved up. Step out of the morbid fear that is blanketing the expression and true ability to communicate with each other. Step out of the linear thoughts about understanding what it is that we just said. For we are you and we are me and we are I'm hearing, we are you, and you are me, and we are we. For the blockages and disbelief that many have around these languages are only, I'm hearing, shooting themselves in the foot. Again, it's referenced back to the shoe. It's like, can't fit into that shoe because it's too small, because you're not seeing past what you think is reality. <laughs> And we honor you, for we understand that this is a difficult time for many on the planet. The more you reach out and assist each other through these difficult times, the more you break down the fake walls that are blocking the freedom that is truly ringing from the mountaintops, that is ringing through the mountains, that is spinning around in beautiful rings around the earth, that is ringing inside the heart. The sound that is ringing, the bells are rung. You can ring my bell, ring my bell. Let us open. I'm hearing the sound gates, the resonance gates, the resounding pearly gates, if you will. For we are able to assist each other in moving up and moving out and moving into, moving through doubt, moving through fear, moving through anger, moving through depression, moving through all of those human feelings and experiences that are valuable, that are worthy of our attention, yet they are not all that we have to give attention to. Therefore, why is it that many are choosing to pay attention to only those things and continually to look in review at what has been and be afraid of what could be rather than breaking through those barriers of disbelief and breaking through those barriers of false belief or beliefs that have been created from a false system. Allow yourself to hold each other's hand. For we are all breaking through these barriers. And here we are now, together, in love and light.
I'm gonna end on that note. Namaste. And so it is.